Ashe, namaste. Welcome back, everyone. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I would like to thank you all for tuning in with me again for another video. I know I haven't been doing as many. Uh, I've been really, real busy, guys. Um, but I'm back. So, uh, you know, I'm coming back with astrology because a lot of you guys, you know, that's the main thing you guys want to learn about astrology. So what I'm a, what I'm gonna try to do. Um, is do more videos centered on astrology, you know, first doing the planets, then doing um, the houses, um, then, you know, the aspects, and more, just more, of course, we'll be doing other videos, so anybody else, you know, when you want to learn about something, please put it in the comments of the video, okay, I'll either answer you directly in the comment section, or I'll just do a video about it and then shout you out in the beginning, OK, so to start off with astrology, bef actually, before I go on, um, as usual, anybody interested in astrology readings, getting your astrology reading the proper way. OK, not by the free websites, not, you know, that, you know, in a reading that will actually change your reality and help you out in your business, your relationships, your health, your your finances, um, your just your personal well-being and actually your journey to discovering yourself. Contact me, a coat healing 22 at gmail.com. Again, this is for if you want a real astrology reading. Okay. So, first and foremost, we, we have to start with the sun, right? We have to start with what this what does the sun mean in your astrology chart? Or what we know as the sun sign. Now, for those of you that are not familiar, this is the sign that you know you know yourself to be as. Okay, like um, if you're born September 15th you would see yourself as a Virgo. That's what we call the sun sign. Or if you were born June 12th, you would you would consider yourself a Gemini. That's what we call your sun sign. Okay. Now I have to do I have to do a whole lot to explain the sun. Of course the sun is very, very important. The first thing I want to explain about the sun in astrology is that the sun represents your conscious mind. Okay. Not only that, but it represents the masculine part of your mind. Now, what is consciousness? Consciousness is awareness, okay? So, in order for you to understand this, you have to understand that consciousness also is ego. Again, something you don't hear a lot in the spiritual community because where they tell you that in order to become conscious, you have to separate from the ego. This is why I always say a lot of these YouTubers do not know what they're talking about. OK, because what is the ego? <clears throat> it's your sense of self. What is consciousness? You understanding the sense of yourself, your, your self um, preservation, your uh, your projection of yourself. OK, S again, the same thing. OK, the ego, consciousness, conscious mind, all the same thing. All right. This is why the sun in astrology, those of you that have been studying astrology a little bit, you know the sun represents your ego. And you also know the sun represents your conscious mind. Why do you think it's the same planet? I mean, all these different attributes are in the same planet. Also with willpower, your sense of self, um, you, you know, your perception of yourself. These are all the same thing. Okay. These are all the same thing. So, and I'm gonna break it down a little bit more because think about it like this. All right, I'm not. I'm. I'm gonna get into the moon sign after this, but the moon represents your subconscious mind. It represents your emotions, your, your your feelings, your imagination. That's all subconscious. Okay. So look at it like this: If you didn't have the ego, okay, or conscious mind, right? If somebody came up to you and you know, let's just say somebody said you're gonna die in five minutes, like literally somebody just came up to you and said you're gonna die in five minutes. If there is no subconscious, I mean, if there's no conscious mind or ego, that's going to go straight into your subconscious mind and become reality. OK, so in all actuality, if you heard that, you would instantly believe it and that would become your reality and you would literally die in five minutes. Your ego slash conscious mind is what says, wait a minute, that's not true. We're not. We're, I don't believe that. OK, why do you think in meditation you have to sit down? And ease the conscious mind because if you're trying to use affirmations and you're trying to um, influence your subconscious mind, the blockage is the conscious mind, which is masculine. That's why it's always trying to protect 
the subconscious mind. I hope you guys are following with me. Okay. The conscious mind tries to protect you. Think about your ego. Okay. Everything like if you, you know not to touch a hot stove, that's your conscious mind. You're conscious of that. You say that's hot. I shouldn't touch that. Okay. I shouldn't walk off this bridge because I'll die. Your sense of self. So you're preserving yourself. OK, this is the thing. This is all the ego. Think about it. And I'm always telling you guys, and especially in my other videos about how wanting to be by yourself, because, you know, again, this spiritual community is all about it. just focus on you, you, you. That's masculine. That's ego, because, again, you're focused on you as an individual. Now, nothing wrong with that, but I'm just saying how they're wording it is saying you need to. Become more conscious, but you need to get away from the ego. The ego and consciousness are the same. It's your sense of self, your uh, your um, your urge to preserve yourself, to know yourself, your individualness. <laughs> okay. Um. So again, we ha we have to understand that because when it comes to the sun sign, this explains a lot of this. All right, because think about it. Um, this is what you want to project to the world because this is what you think you are. This is what you think you're supposed to be. Again, because this is what you're conscious of. This is what you aspire to be. It's like your God in light. So you can tell a lot about somebody, not everything, of course, but you can tell a lot about somebody's mind state by looking at their sun sign. All right, but remember, the mind is not real. OK, you have to remember this. This is why when you get to know somebody, you go past the sun sign. They're completely somebody that you've never seen before. When when they tell you you get in a relationship, you never really know somebody until you live with them. Right. That's because when you first meet somebody, they're projecting that sun. Also, the first house, too. But we're not talking about that. But they're trying to project that. OK, they're trying to show you they're being on their best behavior. They're trying to show you, hey, I have these Gemini qualities. I'm you know, I do this, dude. I do this. I'm very, very, um, you know, again. But of course, like I always say, I don't want to get too deep into that, because like I always say, you have to find out where these planets are in the houses. This is why you need a real astrology reading. OK, a real astrology reading. Not one of those, not looking at the descriptions of the free websites. They can never be accurate. <clears throat> I already explained in numerous videos of why they cannot be accurate. Okay. Because there's so many other factors. Okay. Just because your son is in the fourth house doesn't mean you're going to be the same as somebody else's who has a son in the fourth house, which is sitting next to Jupiter or is opposing Saturn. You see all these different aspects and then their son is in the 15th degree of of the fourth house you see that's why you need a personal reading okay so again <clears throat> the sun um is you know uh you can tell the state of mind okay now what i also want to talk about is is a little bit deeper because astrology represents the story astrology gave birth to all religions it gave birth to all mythology it gave birth to all this, the whole storyline. If you notice, every story or every movie or whatever you want, it has the same kind of plot. Where does this plot come from? Where the hero, there's a villain, there's this, you know, all this plot. The hero goes through all this stuff. And then, you know, you know, the same plot, right? This comes from astrology. This is talking about the sun going through the zodiac. Okay. Now, there's a reason why each planet has a certain characteristic. Now, the sun... And, and I advise you guys to study astrology more and start reading storybooks, big storybooks, and start watching big movies, the ones who, you know, get the awards and all that stuff. And you'll notice, you'll see the characters inside each of these stories. Okay. Now, the sun represents the hero of the story. Okay. Now, if you had an astrology reading with me, again, the way I do my readings is I teach astrology at the same time. So a lot of you that have had the readings with me, you know this, that that um, the sun represents the hero of the story. All right. So it represents your heroic self. OK, your yourself that wants to pro uh, protect. OK, 
So it also shows you the kind of hero that you are. What do you do to extend your hand? Because everybody it doesn't matter. Nobody, you know, nobody's 100 percent evil. Nobody's 100 percent good. OK, it's, it's just a balance of emotions. OK, so in all actuality, you everyone has a hero, heroic self. But we have different types of hero. If, if, there's a different type of a hero in every story. Right. So the Zodiac shows you what kind of hero are you? Like, what do you do to extend your hand to others? What do you do to uplift whatever you're trying to uplift? What do you do to make a change in your world? And knowing this is very, very important. This is why you can't just know your sun sign. You have to know where it's at. You have to know what it's looking at. You have to know what degree it is. Um, you have to know what's sitting next to your sun. This tells you a lot about your mission. Okay? When you understand this, this is how you'll be able to change your reality accordingly. You'll be able to tap into your willpower. A lot of you guys are wondering, how can I tap into my true energy? How can I take it to the next level? Understanding your sun sign can help you do this. This is why you need a true astrology reading. Okay, so the sun plays the hero role of the story. All right, many, many different things that we have to understand here. Okay, with this. All right, <clears throat> and you're probably wondering, all right, well, who plays the villain? Saturn. OK, even though Saturn is not technically bad, but, you know, you just have to understand that. All right. Now I want to get into um, exaltations, you know, the fall, um, because everybody's sun sign is not in perfect, perfect condition. All right. First of all, we know the sun is at home in Leo. All right. So Le the sun rules Leo. Again, this is why Leo's have that has that big ego, you know, that needs stroking. And but they also have willpower. They also have a strong um, they also have strong self-esteem. It's because the Leo is ruled by sun. So, you know, it's if you're a Leo, if you consider yourself a Leo, OK, um, <clears throat> you know, all my late aug, I mean, late July and then August, beginning in midway to August, that's Leo. OK, if you, you know. These are individuals have a, a strong personality. OK, again, but you have to look at where it's at because the, the sun could be in a bad place. It could be like in the eighth house and you don't shine as much. So take this with a grain of salt. But most of the time when you have Leo sun sign, you have a strong personality. Again, you have a strong sense of self. You have a strong, um, you know, you just have the willpower. You have personality, you attract again, because remember the sun is projecting. So if your sun is healthy, you have a strong projection. You know, you, you, you'll you most likely be more extroverted. Now, I know people, everybody in the spiritual community thinks they're introverted, just like everybody in the spiritual community thinks they're an empath. We have to get real with these terms, guys. Uh, I already did the video about the empath thing, but I'm going to do the same thing with the introvert and extrovert. A lot of you guys are extroverts and don't even realize it. Just because you like to spend time alone does not mean you're an introvert. All right, let's get let's get this. But I'm not going to go into that right now. I might, I might do a video on that. OK. All right. So, again, the sun is at home in Leo. Now, the best place for the sun to be at is actually in Aries. This is what we call exaltation. OK. Why is that? What does Aries represent? And what does the sun represent? Aries represents being in the forefront. OK, Aries represents being at the forefront, charging head on, believing in oneself, taking taking what's yours. OK, doesn't that match up with the sun? Because the the Aries um, archetype is very, very heroic, even more so than the Leo. This is why Aries exalts. OK in the sun. So in all actuality, if you if you're an Aries sun sign, again, that that's that mind state is very powerful. Those of you guys who know Aries, people who are Aries sun sign individuals, you know they have a strong personality. They have a very extroverted way that they do things. And like I said, I'm gonna break those extrovert and the introvert thing down. So if you're a little confused on that, don't worry. I'm gonna do a video on that. OK, they had they, they their personality is 
out of this world a lot of the times, right? Again, not all the time, depending on where their Aries sun sign is at. Okay, so we have to pay attention to that. Another thing is, um, all right, now we'll get into the fall of the sun, which is in Libra. Why is this? Why would the Lib why would Libra fall, you know, in the sun during the sun, time of the sun? Okay. Not only that, but you know, uh this the zodiacs, I mean the signs also represent certain time periods too. So the time period of Libra is sunset, 6 p.m. The sun is setting. If you ever look at the symbol of Libra, go on to Google Images, look at the symbol for Libra in the zodiac, I mean in astrology. You'll notice it looks like the sun setting. It's falling. Okay? But not only that, because you got to remember the opposites. The opposite of Aries is Libra. So if the sun exalts in Aries, then that means the sun is going to fall in Libra. Okay? Sun is going to fall in Libra. This is why usually Libras, I don't mean to, you know, bang on you guys as far as this, because I best believe the Libra exalts somewhere, okay, which Libra exalts in Saturn. I let you guys think about that. But right here, Libra doesn't do well in the sun sign. Again, it doesn't. Don't, don't, you know, if all my Libras out there, don't attack me. You know, because again, it all, all these things are, they're, these are all different attributes within your chart. Okay. Everybody has strength and strengths and weaknesses in their chart. Okay. But usually Libras lack self-esteem. Okay. Or I, I shouldn't say self-esteem, but a sense of self. If you notice a lot of Libra signs, this is why they're so good at, Dealing with many different people, though. This is kind of a strength, too, because they're able to transform themselves for every type of crowd. This is why Libra kind of becomes friends with everybody, because they can transform. You know, they focus on the other individual. See, again, Leo and Aries, they focus on themselves. OK, Libra focus on focuses on others. OK, they put all their, you know, their projection onto others and they say, you know, usually what do you want me to be like so they can go, you know, hang out with some gang members and they'll be able to transform their personality and then go hang with business individuals and be able to change their personality. But at the end of the day, they kind of lose themselves, their sense of self. And their willpower and aspect. This is why Libras are kind of more laid back when it comes to confrontation as far as on the sun sign. Okay. Now the next um, where the sun does really the worst is in Aquarius. Again, uh, same thing. Because remember, what's the opposite of Leo? The opposite of Leo is Aquarius. Okay. So if the Leo is at home in the sun... Then Aquarius gets put on the sun. That has to, again, it has to be the detriment. All right. And, 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 and Aquarius is the same thing. It focuses on others. Again, Leo focuses on the self, focuses on what do I need? Uh, how do I get people to like me? Okay. Now, Aquarius, again, focuses on the other and says, how can I get people to like themselves? How can I bring people up? See, it's not necessarily a bad thing. All these signs, I mean, again, there's good and the bad with everything. But again, when, it when it's time to understand you, all right, because you have to have boundaries as well. And Libra and Aquarius sometimes have a problem with boundaries. Now, I know some of, uh, some of you people that study astrology will say, no, Aquarius is known for shutting people out and being kind of distant. But that's not exactly what I'm talking about. Stop thinking physically. Think mentally. These are mental signs. These, this is air. Libra's an air sign. Aquarius is an air sign. All right. For all you people that don't know that Aquarius is an air sign, I'm telling you now. All right. Because some people that love to argue and say Aquarius is a, a water sign. It is not. <laughs> all right. These are mental signs. So we're not talking physically here. We're talking about the mental state. All right, again, Aquarius is putting the projection for others. 
This is why they're they're so good at being like managers or coaches or, you know, again, I'm just talking about the Aquarius sign. Because just because you're Aquarius sun sign doesn't mean that's actually true. You have to look at the whole chart. I just want to keep saying that over and over again because I'm trying to be as real as possible with you guys. Because as you can see, go on YouTube, there's a lot of people not real about this information. They just want to tell you what they want, what you want to hear, and they want to give you all the good so you can subscribe to their channel. Well, I mean, I want you to subscribe to my channel too, but again, I'm gonna give you this real information. Okay. So you see how this works out. Now there are some other ones that do well in um the sun, like Sagittarius, obviously. Um Gemini does well. But there are also others that do bad, like Capricorn is not really too good on the sun, you know. But again, this is the attribute. Again, it's all coming down to how you project, how you look at yourself, you know, yourself. That's how your willpower is created. OK, your willpower is created from that. Now, you also some say will say you also have willpower coming from Mars, too. That that could be true. That is true. Because Mars is your masculine, your divine masculine. So Mars has a play in your willpower too. So just because you have a difficult sun sign doesn't mean you have zero willpower and you ha you don't stand up for yourself. You got to look at your Mars as well. Because Mars and the sun correlate together. They work as a team. Same thing with Mercury too. Mars, Mercury, and, and the sun, that's like a three-man team right there. So you got to look at all three and look exactly where they're at. <clears throat> You know, um, again, I just wanted to, you know, touch base on that to let you know a little bit about what the sun means in astrology. So then when you go out and you, and you hear somebody, oh, somebody's a cancer. OK, that's the heroic self. That's also their sense of self. That's also what they would like to project to you. That's their perfect vision of themselves, what, it, what a cancer is, you know, cancer on the sun. Is, is the heroic the heroic self of a cancer is going to be somebody who protects the weak or who they perceive to be weak and it usually is people that are weak emotionally it doesn't necessarily have to be physically weak or they don't have finances it's maybe somebody that um there's people that are kind of have emotional weaknesses Okay, they have they're maybe a little unstable emotionally, and and you know when a cancer sun sign sees these individuals, they kind of cling to them, because they say I'll protect you, I'll make you feel comfortable, I'll take care of you, you see. So again, this perfect sense of self, and this is why, you know, Pisces, Cancer, all these types of individuals, will usually get into fields of, um, uh, of care, you know, health, home care, and stuff like that. Or take care of children, but not all the time. Again, like I said, you have to get a real astrology reading and look at exactly at everything. But you will have this aspect no matter where your sun is at. Okay? So if you have Sagittarius on the sun, you will have this adventurous side somewhere. It may be hidden. Like I said, it could be down there on the eighth house. It could be in the fourth house where it's kind of more so hidden. All right? But you still have it. You, you can still tap into it. And this is the whole good thing about knowing your chart, because now you know where exactly how to tap into this. OK, now understanding the, the sun in the houses. All right, because all right, if the sun is your ego and your sense of self and your projection, your, your ability to project. Right. Your God and light. What does that mean in the houses? It's showing you how you can tap into this, your willpower, how you can tap in into understanding who you really are on this physical plane. OK, so if your son is, is in the eighth house, like I don't know why I keep saying that, then, you know, you have to go through the dark tunnels because the eighth house represents uh, so many wrong things of what they tell you. The eighth house represents eighth house represents um, it's called the house of taboo. All right. The house of secrets, the house of the dark path, which is all just your feminine energy, because remember, feminine energy is darkness, but it's not a negative thing like they make it seem like. OK, so it's also the house of the occult. It's the house of what humanity is scared of. That's why it's the house of sexuality, too, because true human sexuality. We're scared to talk about that. 
especially in America. We're scared to talk about that. That's why we it bursts out in other different ways. Okay, we're scared to accept what a human being is, and we have some dark things with inside of us. We have some really kinky things <laughs> that's stored inside of us. That's all a part of the eighth house. So if your son is there, it's magnifying this. It's showing you this is how you discover who you are. Okay? If your son is in the seventh house, you'll discover who you are with others. You see? You discover, you discover who you are with others. Other people are going to help you just, uh, know your path, help you learn your personality, help you rebuild your willpower. If you're, you know, I can keep going on and on. All right. If your son is in your fourth house, okay, you'll you'll find out who you are through your family, through your mother, through your um through your family tree, your ancestors, learning about your your great grandparents and stuff like that. You see what I'm saying? So you take that accordingly, and like I said, still you have to look at everything. You have to look at everything. Okay. So again, if you want those real astrology readings, contact me, occulthealing22 at gmail.com. Okay. I don't charge um five hundred dollars <laughs> because that's usually how much it costs. Five between I'll say the average number for real astrology readings. Real astrology. I tell you guys all the time, things cost a lot. Real things cost a lot. All right. But real astrology readings go from five hundred to eight hundred dollars because there's so much work involved, so much for so much information that can change your life. My first astrology reading I paid seven hundred dollars for, it, and this was like, like, I'm twenty eight, twenty nine now. It's like probably about fourteen years ago. I paid like seven hundred dollars. Yep, but again. It changed my life and changed the way that I do things. So I don't charge I don't charge five hundred, seven hundred dollars or anything like that. Um, uh, contact me though, and at a coat healing twenty two at gmail dot com. The email is in the description of this video. Okay, so get the study in, guys. Learn about your your sun sign. The next video I'm gonna do about the moon sign. Okay, so I thank you for tuning in and watching. And keep your vibrations high. Peace, love, and namaste. Thank you.